Welcome to the finale of the Battle of Cadre 4. I'm Jason, the creator of the Kaladasha universe, and in just a moment here, we'll decide the fate of the planet. Now it's time to decide the fate of Cadre 4 here in Phase 2 of the Albion campaign for the Kaladasha universe. And just like in Phase 1, the battle for Kaelin 6, we're going to play a little dice game. Of course, there's 32 dice that are going to be in play. And each faction starts off with eight dice base. So right there, there's half the dice are allocated just for the nature of the rules of the game. The remaining 16 dice are split between the faction based on their performance. Now in phase two, the Surakari scored a total of five points. The Aragul scored a total of four. We'll do some rounding math there. And what actually happens is neither side has an advantage. The Surakari did not score enough points advantage to actually get extra dice this phase. So the remaining 16 dice are split equally between the Surakari and the Aragul. So each faction has a total of 16 dice going in this fight. However, the Surakari are coming off a minor victory back in phase one. So what they're going to get is a preemptive strike die. So before the first turn, they, they roll one die and have a chance to eliminate or disable one of the Aragul dice right off the bat. So with that, let's get started playing this game. We're going to roll the preemptive strike die for the Surakari. We want to see a 4 through 6. Uh, 1, 2, 3 means nothing happened for it. And a 1, 2, 3, so unfortunately that means no bonus for the Surakari. Now let's get into the actual normal turn sequence of the game. We have the Surakari over here on the left side of the table, and we have the Aragul over here on the right side of the table. And then we're going to go back and forth rolling each of these pools of dice, looking for 6s, 5s, and 4s. And of course, you can only get a total of 3 of each of those numbers during any given round, and that's just really a balancing factor. Let's start off here the Surakari and roll all of their dice. And that is not a good start for them. Uh, let's see, we got a bunch of 4s and two fives. Like I said, you can only get three of any given number, so we gotta drop off a bunch of these fours, and they just end up being normal dice that really have no effect in the battle. And they be off to a quick and good start for the Aragul, let's see. Okay, so definitely a better roll there for the Aragul. We're gonna go in line here now, sixes, fives, and fours. Each six destroys an opposing die and takes it out of the game. Each five critically damages the die and knocks it out for two turns. Each four damages the die and knocks it out for one turn. So let's go here. Sixes. None for the Surakari. Three for the Aragul. So three dice are just gone. Fives. We have one for the Aragul, two for the Surakari. So one Surakari die becomes critically damaged. Two Aragul become critically damaged. And then three and three. So let's see. Three damage dice for the Aragul. Three damage dice for the Surakari. End of the turn. Let's coalesce everything back together and shift everything over to where they should be. Going in here to turn around two, we got a little bit of advantage for the Irgul Empire. Let's roll some dice. Surakari. They managed to get a six this time around. Six and three fours and a bunch of just nothingsness. And Aragul did not fare much better. In fact, they came out a little bit on the worst side there. Let's go ahead and head down the list here. Of course, six is kill, five is critically damaged, four damages, two sixes. So each lose a die. Five over here for the Aragul. So we got one more die to critically damaged. And then we have four and one, or sorry, three and one. So three dice for these Aragul become damaged, one die for the Surakari becomes damaged. So damage dice slide in, damage dice slide in, critical, critical. After two rounds of combat, the Aragul have a slight lead. Let's go ahead and see how round three turns out. Surakari, pulling in a six, two fives and a four. So a little bit of damage there. Aragul. That was a five. So they had an extra five. They had two extra fives. They had some good, Aragul had some good rolling there. All right. One dead from each pool. Three critically damaged for the Surakaris. Three get damaged. They get 
two shoved over here. Sarukari inflict one damage die. Aragul inflict two damage dice. Slide in. Slide in. Up, up. The Aragul are looking really good here as we go into round four. They're actually getting pretty close to possibly getting a major victory here, which would actually totally secure Cadre 4 for them. But let's see what happens. Surakari so are going up first. And they are not going down without a fight, though. But Surakari so have a lot more dice, or sorry, Irigul have a lot more dice here. And it's not immediately the best result they could get. Oh, wait, no, that's going to be, that, that'll probably be the end of the game there. <laughs> Is that the end of it? Well, okay, let's go ahead and decide things here. We've got two kills, so two dice are eliminated. And then now we move on to fives, which occur simultaneous. One more out for the, oh, sorry, one more critically damaged for the Aragul. And we've got three that become dam critically damaged for the Surakari. And then we have two damage dice here. Or damage dice for the Aragul, moving them out to the end. At the end of a battle round here, the Surakari have no dice left. The Aragul Empire has eight. Which means, since the Surakari have no dice left, they have lost a battle. Aragul has claimed victory. Unfortunately though, the Aragul only have eight dice of their 16 left. Uh, which means, since they did not score over half of their initial starting dice, it's going to be a minor victory for the Aragul. With a minor victory here in Phase 2, it doesn't mean the Surakari Siege has actually been broken, it just means the battle is going really in favor of the Aragul at this point. And to be fair, the blockade is really not in very good shape. This means supplies can get in and out of Cadre 4, it continues to be part of the Aragul economy, and therefore we're going to have to return to Cadre 4 later on in this campaign to figure out exactly what happens to it. But next up is for Phase 3 is going to be the Battle of Albion 8. Um, it's going to be a few months until I pick this Albion campaign back up. I've got a few products I want to get released between now and then to get everything caught up and prepared for the campaign. But there we go. Once again, it's a minor victory here for the Aragul in Phase 2, the Battle of Cadre 4. I'm Jason. For more information on the Kaladagia universe or to check out a free starter set of Legends of Kaladagia and the entire miniature line, head over to Kaladagia.com. Thanks for watching and have a good night.